tonight we have a, a problem that claims there's a unique positive x such that the fractional part of x times the ceiling of x is equal to this linear function negative 3x plus 5. Now here's some definitions for you. Uh, the fractional part's an always a number trapped between 0 and 1. And this is a way to linearize the fractional part. Let's do a concrete example. Let's say we know the fractional part of 7.8 is 0 0.8, right? But we need a way to fit that into a more general setting where we can actually solve problems. So notice right here that this would be what? Uh, 7.8. minus 7. Okay? And notice that x would be between, this would be 7, uh, 7.8 and 8. Okay, so this is a way to kind of linearize what we mean by the fractional part. And if you actually graph this out, this looks like this is a sawtooth function. Okay? So in other words, we know the fractional part of x is equal to x minus i. Uh, when x is trapped between i and i plus 1. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and presume you know about the ceiling. We'll just, we'll take that as we go, but this is the definition of the ceiling. It's the opposite, more or less, of the definition of the floor. So our object here, I'll just call this the object rather than say fractional part of x and ceiling of x. We can linearize our object in this fashion based on these two definitions. Y'all notice I left this out, uh, i and k are, are integers. I and K are uh, integers here. And I, I think it's important to use two different symbols, although some people might disagree with that one. All right. So anyway, we can linearize it. In, uh, uh, and again, we're linear, linearizing the left-hand side here of this equation so we can set it equal to another linear expression. Okay. Now let's just take a look at this one concrete example here. If I is equal to 2, then we get our object is equal to x minus 2 times 3. Now notice uh, that would be the, this piece right here is the ceiling of x. And I'm just explaining this as I go. Uh, that's the ceiling of x because if i is 2, x is between 2 and 3 from right here. You see, folks, if i is 2, if i is equal to 2, you have 2 right here. And then x is certainly between 2 and 3. So that means the ceiling of x would be equal to 3. And of course, uh, it's x minus i is x minus 2. So you see, we got this thing as in a linear type of form. It's useful, very, very useful. Now, um, another thing that's important here, coupled with the fact that our object, uh, the ceiling of x, Okay, times the uh, fractional part of x. Okay, this is always going to be greater than or equal to zero whenever x is greater than or equal to zero, right? So you see, it's always positive for x greater than or equal to zero, definitely. This, the, the fractional part times the ceiling has to be non negative, and that's, that's crystal clear without saying much more, okay? But notice that our linear expression becomes negative once x is greater than 5 thirds. All right, once x is greater than 5 thirds. So that means we only need to check that these two cases here. There's just two cases, uh, i equals 0 and i equals 1. Okay, because remember, um, i equals 1 implies that x is between 1 and 2, right? And so we only have to check i equals 0 and i equals 1, okay? So anyway, let's go ahead and, and look at this very first case. I didn't work it out. I worked out this second one already. But uh, so this means this. So that would mean that um, x would be equal to minus 3x plus 5, right? But notice that's going to imply that x is equal to 4 fifths. Okay, this means uh, x is equal to 4 over 5, and that's very quick to see, right? Equals to uh, 5 over 4. Okay, 5 over 4. But notice 5 over 4 
is not in this interval, right? Five over four is bigger than one. So you see, we, we, we don't get a solution here, okay? Since this is five over four, uh, no solution. I'll abbreviate solution, S-O-L, okay? Now let's take it to uh, I equals one. Now you see, you, again, using our result, we get to the floor of a number when, uh, excuse me, the ceiling of a number between one and two is two. That's where this two comes from. And of course, the, the fractional part is x minus one when i is equal to one. All right, and so when we solve this out, we actually get x is equal to seven fifths. Now this is possible because seven fifths is between one and two, right? This is a possible solution because it falls within, I guess, the domain of interest for this particular stage of the problem, right? So let's check this solution and see if it works out. Now here's the original problem, okay? So notice that um, uh, the um, if you take the fractional part of seven fifths, I'll just write it. The fractional part of seven fifths is two fifths, right? Okay, and the ceiling of seven fifths is certainly two, right? Again, the ceiling, folks, is just the smallest integer that's greater than the input, okay? Well, um, two is an integer, and it's the smallest integer that is greater than seven-fifths. Three would be a greater integer, but it would be, a, would be a ceiling, so to speak, but it's not the least integer, all right, that meets that condition. All right, so notice that this is equal to four-fifths. So what we get uh, is four-fifths. I should have just written it out, but uh, four fifths. We're checking to see if four fifths is equal to minus three times seven fifths. Okay. Now minus. Th let me just write this. A uh, minus three times seven over five. I should have just written it in the line above. All right. Plus five. We're asking a question here. We're not asserting it's true. We're checking to see if this is true. And folks, it looks like we're in luck here because 4 over 5 does equal this is 21 over 5, right? So what we have here, folks, is minus, excuse me, minus 21 plus 25 over 5, right? And so let's put a big fat check mark right there. We got it right, okay? So uh, it did work when we substituted uh, x equals 2. Let me write this here because I'm off the screen, right? Remember, we got x is equal to 7 fifths um, from the work above. Let's back up here. See, we got x equals 7 fifths as a candidate solution, and it checks out, okay? We get, uh, when we substitute 7 fifths on both sides, we get four fifths equals to four fifths. Okay, so it does work. It's the only solution because of what we said earlier about this linear function. Uh, this linear function becomes negative once you're to the right of five thirds, but we know our object is greater than or equal to uh, zero, sorry, when uh, x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so uh, that does it, I believe. Uh, x is equal to seven fifths. Um, is a solution and I hope you enjoyed viewing that.